You're watching the News at One. Thanks so much for staying with us. The South African economy has moved into a recession. This after the country's gross domestic product decreased by 0.7% during the first quarter of 2017. This follows a 0.3% contraction in the fourth quarter of 2016. An economy is technically in a recession following two quarters of negative growth. Statistics of Africa figures show that the largest negative contributor to growth in GDP in the first quarter was the trade, catering and accommodation industry, which decreased by almost 6% and contributed negative 0.8% of a percentage point to GDP growth. The manufacturing industry contracted by 3.7% and contributed negative 0.5% of a percentage point. The RAND has extended losses by nearly 1% off the news. For more on the grim GDP number, I'm joined by Ian Cruikshanks. He's the chief economist at the South African Institute of Race Relations. Thanks so much for your time on Good SABC to be with News. You. Was today's announcement a surprise given the economic news that South Africa has been seeing this year? Well, I think it should not have been a surprise, but the majority view was that we would just squeeze in to a very low level of growth. But if one simply had to look at the level of business confidence, consumer confidence, consumer spending, job destruction rather than job creation, capital be exiting the economy, I think all these things have given very strong pointers recently to the fact that there was a high risk of a contraction, which in fact we've seen. Mm -hmm. People are saying this is a technical recession. Can you explain to us if there is a difference between a technical recession and just a normal recession? Let's just make it quite clear. A technical recession is a shrinking of the economy. That's final. That is the big, the big decision that's, that's changed. And, uh, you know, I think it's just a figure of speech, financial speech, and really it means that there's less business activity, there's less activity overall and, uh, and that's a very, very worrying for an economy like ours where we really need 5% growth rather than anything contracting. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to us as South African consumers knowing that we're in a technical right. recession? What we have seen recently is that uh, international investors have been abandoning uh, corporate South Africa. They've been massive sellers uh, somewhere around 45 billion rands worth of South African shares so far this year. That's a huge number. Very often we would expect that sort of number for a whole year inflow. That's been reversed and I think that just sums up the difficulty we're going to have in attaining foreign capital to grow the economy. There's always a price, of course. We will have to pay higher interest rates to get capital where we can, probably from diminished sources, but we'll have to pay higher interest rates. What does that mean? Maybe we have the next interest rate change is not going to be a cut, but it's going to be a hike. And then, of course, the cost of living goes up, the cost of people's bonds, their mortgage bonds, motor car loans, whatever other credit they've got goes up. And we, similarly, for them, it becomes more difficult to get these loans to spend what they need. If you were to look forward, are we going to sink deeper into a recession if we carry on the way we are, or is there still a chance for our economy to grow and to see higher numbers than we've just seen from Statistics? There is a chance that we'll get some growth. What we have to remember is just look at agriculture, a large portion of the economy. Uh, when the maize crop comes in, and it mostly comes in in, this, in the second quarter, and that then is going to be a big fillip to the economy, but that's not enough. You can't just grow a whole economy from harvesting a few mealies. It's got to be much more than that. Very disappointing just looking at manufacturing, the fact that there it was hoped that with the, uh, we'd, we'd get a, a surge in demand as the global economy picked up. We're not seeing that. And if we just look at, at other commodities, it's not happening. We're not able to produce profitably to be able to access uh, global markets on a price competitive market. So I fear that this could go on a little longer. I think we're going to bump along somewhere close to ground level for a while. Mm -hmm. We've been told that it takes about six to 18 months to typically recover from a recession. What can we do to shorten this period and to recover quicker? What we need is a national, this, this uh, attitude that goes from consumers to business to government as well. Live within our means. Don't spend what we haven't got. That is the worst critical mistake to make right now. And of course, I see your wry smile there. But, but that's a fact. And we've got to be led from the top. 
and it, that doesn't seem to be the sort of leadership we're seeing right now. But that's the first essential. If we live within our means, we have a hope of then channeling savings into the beneficiation of the economy overall. Mm -hmm. You were speaking earlier about interest rates and how you believe that they're going to rise. In times of a recession, sometimes in order to try and stimulate the economy, we see that interest rates do get cut yes. and the government does try and stimulate the economy so we can see a little bit of growth. You're not seeing this for South that, Africa? That's what we need. But remember, this sort of Damocles hanging over us, the ra international ratings agencies, they have said straight out, if South Africa goes into a recession, we will be downgraded. That sounds pretty final. It's not difficult to understand that. And I think that is a worry. Normally, one would expect in any uh, uh, leading economy that you'd find lower activity, lower demand for credit, interest rates could be cut. And it should be then led by spending by government. But we're not going to get a government spending-led recovery in South Africa. Where's the money? It just, there just isn't enough at the moment. So it's got to be a really maybe a, a lengthy, slow, painful process. With junk status, is yes. it going to um, affect the country's ability to recover from this recession? You've just yes. touched on that yes. briefly now. Yes. What is junk status? It means non-investment grade. It means that we don't qualify for many of the major savings institutions worldwide to invest in South African securities, to buy government bonds. We desperately, we, we don't, we're not able to raise enough capital domestically. We've got to get international capital. Now I think what we could see happening is that as we're seen as a higher risk, because we're likely to be downgraded, the interest rate we have to pay to compensate for that will be at a higher level. Okay. And this is, this is what we're facing for the time being. How long could this go on for? A year, two years? It's, it's quite possible. We often told that a recession, as you said earlier on, it, it's not necessarily caused from a crisis. It can be that business is not um, going that well. In South Africa, do you believe that our technical recession is in part caused by the political situation that we are seeing, the uh, perceived battles that we are seeing for the state being captured by private individuals mm. and the like? That's definitely what one would call a leading question. But the answer is yes. Uh, we need to be led you know, from, from the center. We need to have the sort of attitude that live within our means, um, that it's only sp any capital spending should only be efficiently spent. It should only be spent to grow the economy, not private bank accounts. And I think there's got to be that sort of attitudinal change. And it's not just the government leadership. It's every person who has to go and say, hey, it's time for us to go and vote for change. I think the, the population as a whole has to get into that mood and say, so far, no further. Um, but we ha it has to be a partnership type agreement between the public sector, government, the private sector, state-owned enterprises, and the people themselves. When that happens, and there's a general move to say, hey, look, we can recover this, we can work together, it's what we have to do. It may take a while to develop this attitude, though. Um, when we speak of problems that we face as South Africa, uh, government response to yes. criticism is often that the private sector is sitting on huge reserves of cash. They um, are very influential and are perhaps not doing enough to try and alleviate the challenges that South Africa faces when we have economic situations like this. Right. What we really need is a, a public-private sector partnership, a partnership between government and business. If we could have that, then uh, government could say, well, what is it that you want to invest your uninvested uh, cash? What we want is to have a, a, a helpful infrastructure to know that we've got railways where the trains run on time every time, harbours that work all the time, roads that are continually fixed up and made in good order. You know, everybody lives in a street or has a street close by where the potholes aren't getting fixed. All of this on a bigger scale doesn't help for uh, the movement of goods, for the development of, of uh, industry, and, and I think that it has to be that sort of level. Big uh, infrastructure development first, which government can facilitate, and after that, I think that we can then bring down the cost of our, of our production because of greater efficiencies, make ourselves more globally price competitive, which I'm afraid we're not. Get, get labor, we've got to join this party as well, to understand there's a straight line between productivity and reward. 
You can't move the reward if you're not getting more pro productivity as well. We've got to realize we're in a global marketplace and we must do what we can, improve efficiency, improve our competitiveness in every way to be able to grow this economy, to provide the jobs and, uh, that, that we need so desperately. Ian Cookshank, thanks so much for your time you. on SABC News.